The most frightening national forest is easily the Manistee National Forest in Michigan. And in this episode, you're going to hear 10 very frightening stories that deal with strange bipedal canine creatures and possibly Sasquatch and a host of other bizarre humanoids that are going to prove to you why you should probably second guess hunting or venturing or just going off and exploring in this large body of forest. So without further ado, let's jump into them. Hello, Secrets of the Woods. I have been a fan of your channel for a while now. I've been wanting to tell you my story, so here it goes. This winter was pretty brutal up in northern Michigan, and my dog Buddy seemed to feel it the worst. Most evenings, I'd let him out before bed, but one night, he just wouldn't come back in. Finally, I grabbed a flashlight and went to see where he'd gotten off to. Our property backs up to a big chunk of Manistee National Forest. I could see his tracks heading into the trees. I figured he must have caught a squirrel scent or something, so I whistled and followed. The odd thing was that his tracks weren't alone. Running alongside Buddy's paw prints were another set, bigger and kind of misshapen. I'd never seen anything like them. Four toes are way too long and curved, like misshapen human hands. That's when I started getting the creeps. I kept following, Buddy's bark echoing further into the woods. Snow was falling pretty heavily now, burying the tracks the further I got. Then, up ahead, silhouetted against the falling snow, I saw a figure. At first, all I could make out was its height. It had to be at least seven feet tall, lanky, and hunched over. There was no fur, not that I could see, just pale skin stretched over sharp bones. It was kneeling down, doing something to Buddy. Then it stood up straight, and I saw it had no face, just a smooth, bone-white skull. Terror shot through me. My first instinct was to bolt, but somehow I managed to let out a yell, grabbing Buddy as I went. That thing turned its head toward me its dead, empty eye sockets seeming to bore right into me. We took off through the trees, me half dragging my dog, who was freaked out, but thankfully unharmed. I don't remember the run back to the house. I barely even remember getting inside and locking the door. I ended up huddled on the floor with Buddy, just trying to make sense of the thing I saw. Whatever it was, it wasn't an animal. The next day, the snow covered any signs of tracks. I haven't let Buddy go back alone since. On occasion, I swear, I hear scratching at the back door late at night, which makes me question whether or not that creature is still lurking in the woods, awaiting my next error. The more I think about it, the more convinced I am that the creature wasn't there to hurt Buddy, or even me, physically. It was as if it didn't care that we were there until I made myself known. Then it turned on me, but with a kind of cold, unfeeling curiosity, not like an animal defending itself. I've read stories about these soulless, skeletal things online. Some people call them rakes or other names. The way I figure it out, they're not after flesh and blood. They're there to steal something else, your soul, your life force, whatever you want to call it. I think that night in the snow, that's what it had planned for me. I still don't know how I got free. Maybe Buddy's barking distracted it. Maybe I just got lucky. But since then, sometimes I feel a sort of coldness inside that wasn't there before. A nagging thought that a piece of me is missing, snatched away in those dark woods. It makes me wonder how many other people have crossed paths with those creatures and never been the same again. Now that I think about it, my grandpa used to tell us stories when I was a kid. Warnings, really, to be careful in the woods, especially at night or when it snows. He talked about old tales that people around here used to whisper about before cities and lights chased all the shadows away. Back then, I just thought they were silly stories to keep us kids from wandering off. But now, I don't know. 
Maybe Grandpa knew more than he let on, or he had seen something himself when he was younger that scarred him for life. Maybe all those warnings about things lurking in the forest weren't so crazy after all. I wish I'd paid more attention back then. Maybe he could have told me the thing's name or how to defend myself. Now, I'm left with more questions than answers, and this bone-deep certainty that I just got away from something truly evil that winter night. I've started looking into Native American history around here. As it turns out, there are plenty of old legends from the tribes that used to live in the Manistee about dangerous spirits haunting the woods. Apparently, they even had names for skeletal creatures, soul stealers, and other things that blurred the line between living and dead. It makes you wonder how much of that knowledge we've lost over the years, how much of it was dismissed as superstition, while at the same time, these things were still lurking in the shadows. It's unsettling to think about. We walk around as if we own the place, never realizing that there might be these ancient, hungry forces sharing this land with us. It makes me wonder if my grandpa knew about those stories. If that's what shaped his warnings and what drove his fear, he always seemed respectful of the forest, like he knew it held more than deer and birds. Maybe I should have listened more closely instead of just rolling my eyes at another one of his scary stories. One thing keeps nagging at me. The spot in the woods where I saw that creature? I'm not even sure how to describe the feeling there. Heavy, oppressive, like something was buried there, something that isn't meant to be disturbed. I've read about Native American burial mounds throughout the Midwest. Now. I can't help but wonder if maybe there's one on my property or nearby. Could that thing have been guarding it? Would that explain why it felt so possessive of that place? And if so, what did I unleash by running through there with Buddy that night? I haven't gone back, obviously. Some things are better left undisturbed, but I can't shake this feeling that this isn't over. Maybe I made a dangerous enemy that night. One that's closer than I think, just waiting for another chance to strike. The more I dig, the more I realize this isn't some isolated incident. There are stories just like mine all over the world. People are spotting similar creatures lurking in forests, graveyards, and lonely places where something feels not quite right. Sometimes it's just a glimpse, a sighting but there are also cases where people vanish without a trace, or worse, are found but not the same as they were before. I've started wondering if these creatures are somehow connected. Maybe they're drawn to similar things, burial sites, places with a dark history, or just people like me who stumble into their territory. There could be more out there than just the one skeletal thing that stalked me. It's a chilling thought that there might be a whole network of these shadows sharing the world we think of as ours. Then there's the other possibility. What if they aren't bound to this world at all? There's this theory floating around the internet that these creatures aren't ghosts, demons, or even aliens. They're something entirely different. Beings from another dimension who slip in and out of our reality through thin spots or hidden places. It's like a cosmic glitch that keeps happening over and over again. Sometimes, I wish I never followed those tracks into the woods that night. I could still go about my life blissfully, unaware of the things I couldn't see. But I can't. I saw what I saw. And now I know there's a whole hidden world intertwined with our own, full of dangers we don't fully understand. I don't have proof to convince anyone just my story to tell, and a lingering unease that never fully goes away. Maybe it doesn't matter if anyone believes me. What matters is the truth about what's out there, lurking at the edge of our perception. Maybe ignorance really is bliss, but some things, once you see them, don't let you go. Okay, so this is weird and I still ain't sure if I even believe it myself. 
It was a few years ago, when I was into dirt biking big time. My friends and I would spend entire weekends tearing up the trails in Manistee National Forest. I loved that place. Dense woods, twisty trails, the whole deal. This one Saturday, we were pushing it late, trying to get one last run in before dark. I got a little separated, which happens sometimes. Next thing you know, I'm deeper into the woods than I intended to be, and the sun is starting to go down. I turn my bike around, trying to backtrack to where we agreed to meet. Suddenly, I come around this bend, and there's this thing standing right in the middle of the trail. It was huge, a good head taller than me, and covered in dark, shaggy fur. She stood upright on two legs like a person, but the face was all wrong kind of flat with a long snout and yellow eyes. I froze. I didn't even think. I just froze. And this thing takes a step forward. This low growl that we should emit caused the hair on my arms to stand on end. It didn't feel like any animal I'd ever encountered. It wasn't scared, more like curious, maybe even angry. I immediately snapped out of it engaged the bicycle's gears, and hauled it away. I never looked back. I just rode like hell until I finally found the others. I didn't say anything about it at first. I thought they'd think I was nuts or had hit my head or something. It's only been in the last year or so that I realized maybe I wasn't crazy. I started hearing about other sightings online. People talking about Bigfoot and stuff out in those forests. The descriptions sounded too similar to what I saw for it to be a coincidence. Every time I go back out to the woods now, it's in the back of my mind. I wonder if that thing, whatever it was, is still out there. And part of me wonders if there is something else I should have done. Should I have turned off the bike and gotten closer? I tried to figure out what it was. Now, I'm not so sure. I want to know the answer. The thing is, it messed with me a little bit. I used to think I had a good handle on the world, what was out there and what wasn't. It turns out that maybe I don't know much of anything. I started paying attention to those weird stories you see online, ones I used to laugh at. People are reporting impossible things, creatures that shouldn't exist. Now, I think, maybe they're not that crazy after all. There's something humbling about realizing how little control we really have. We like to think we're the top dogs, the ones in charge of this planet. But if there's a giant, hairy monster lurking out in the woods, smarter than any animal we know, well, that makes you realize we're pretty small in the grand scheme of things. I still go back out to the forests, but I'm more careful now. Leave earlier, stick to the well-known trails, and get a buddy system going just in case. Sometimes, I even find myself looking over my shoulder, half expecting to see a pair of glowing yellow eyes watching me from between the trees. I guess that encounter stuck with me more than I thought it would. And honestly, it gets weirder. See, I didn't tell anyone about it for years, not even my brother, and we're pretty close. But a while back, he started telling me about something creepy he saw while hunting back in 2015. He swears he saw this huge, dog-like creature walking on its hind legs. He described it, and it sounded exactly like the thing I'd encountered on the dirt bike, right down to the yellow eyes and the thick, dark fur. It gives me the shivers just thinking about it. It makes me wonder, are there more of them out there? A whole species is hiding right under our noses. I know it sounds crazy. Part of me still has a hard time believing it myself, but after seeing, well, what I saw, and now knowing my brother isn't making his story up, it makes me wonder what else could be lurking out in those woods. It ain't a comforting thought, that's for sure. I haven't told many people this story. Most people would roll their eyes or assume I'd been into my brother's moonshine stash. But I figured if there's anyone out there who might understand, it'd be someone who reads sites like this one. Also, the drive home was tense. We didn't talk much, too busy replaying the night in our heads. 
Once we were back and had a chance to scroll online, we started looking up whatever we could find about the Manistee Forest. It turns out, we weren't the first ones to notice something weird happening out there. People on old forums said it's always been kind of a spooky place. There's this whole legend about the Michigan Dogman, this giant wolf-like creature that supposedly stalks the woods. Supposedly. But seeing what I might have seen, it makes me wonder. Then, there are the people who think it's something entirely different. There have apparently been quite a few UFO sightings in the area. One dude even claims he got abducted and woke up in a field with no memory of what happened. It sounds crazy, but after that night, I'm not so quick to judge. Maybe someone else has seen something like what I encountered. Maybe this is more common than we'd like to think. Or maybe we're just a couple of crackpots with overactive imaginations. Honestly, at this point, I don't know what to believe anymore. My dad takes me and my brother hunting every November. This past year, we decided to try a new spot deeper in the Manistee National Forest. We figured we'd have better luck if we were further from the usual hunting spots. We should have stayed on the beaten path. We set up camp close to a creek. On our first day out, we didn't see as much as a squirrel. We all kind of joked that the deer must have heard we were coming. But that night, things got really weird. It started with the smell. My dad says it smelled like rotten meat, so bad it made me gag. Then we heard it. This clicking noise, like dry branches snapping, getting closer and closer. We shined our flashlights into the trees, but we couldn't see a darn thing. By then, I wanted to hightail it out there. But my dad, who's an ex-military, is tough as nails. He made us stay and waited out. Whatever it was, it circled our camp the whole night. Click, 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 and then that awful smell rolls in with it. In the morning, we found tracks. Big ones. But not like any animal I'd ever seen. They had too many toes and the claws. Jesus, I don't even want to think about the creature that could make tracks like that. My dad tried to say it was probably a deformed bear or something, but I'm not so sure. We packed up our things as fast as possible. On the drive home, no one said a word, but we all knew we weren't going back there anytime soon. Some things are better left unseen, you know? That clicking sound, though, I still hear it in my nightmares sometimes. Now, the spot we picked wasn't anything remarkable, at least not at first glance, just another patch of dense Michigan forest. But looking back, a few things stand out. The trees there were huge, ancient looking, and way bigger than what I usually see while hunting. Underneath those giants, the ground was pretty bare, with not much undergrowth. Kind of unusual. The biggest thing was the silence. No rustling leaves, birds, or bugs. It was like all the critters had just packed up and left. That seemed even stranger than the tracks, honestly. Thinking back, it's almost like the whole place felt empty. Dead, even. Maybe I was just spooked from the night before, but the air itself kind of weighed on me. It's hard to explain unless you've felt it yourself. We definitely weren't the only ones who noticed something was off about that place. We found a pile of bones near the creek, deer or something, picked way cleaner than any coyote would do. Something felt wrong there, right down to the marrow of my bones. There's another thing I kind of forgot to mention. At one point during the night, I had to take a leak. I tried to ignore it, but nature calls, you know? So... I crept away from the tent a little bit, just off into the trees. That's when I saw it. Two yellow eyes, glowing in the darkness. They weren't close, maybe a good distance into the woods, but they were definitely focused on me. I couldn't really make out a shape behind them, but they were way too big and bright to be deer, that's for sure. I stumbled back to the tent, barely dared to breathe out loud. I didn't even tell my dad or brother. 
I guess I kind of hoped it was just my eyes playing tricks in the dark. But deep down, I don't think it was. That feeling of being watched stuck with me the whole rest of the night, even worse than the clicking and the smell. Just thinking about it now makes my skin crawl. After getting home, I did some digging online. It turns out that the only remotely weird thing about that part of the forest is some old rumor about a UFO sighting. It happened years ago, some kind of big light in the sky. Then, there's the story of a hunter who went missing and was found dead up there. But that's just talk. There's no way to know if it's even true. Folks say all kinds of things about a place like that. Bigfoot sightings, weird energy fields, all that stuff. I'm not usually one for conspiracy theories, but after that night, I don't know. Maybe there's more going on out there than we realize. Maybe all those crazy stories have a grain of truth, a reason why that whole place just felt so wrong. It just so happened that later on, I stumbled across this YouTube channel, What Lurks Beneath. They had this interview with a trucker named Joe Barger, like full on shot at dead. I thought it was totally made up at first. But the weirder part is that the place he describes encountering the creature, it sounds really close to where we camped, the way he talked about the dead silence, the feeling of something watching him. It hit me right in the gut. I guess it always comes down to whether you believe the guy or not. The thing is, after what I went through, the whole story doesn't sound so far-fetched anymore. It makes me wonder how much other stuff might be lurking out there in those woods and whether maybe we dodged a bullet or a whole lot of teeth and claws. I always thought those stories online about Bigfoot or aliens were fake. Just something to keep people interested on the internet, you know? That is, until a couple months ago, we picked a spot deeper in the woods because we were trying to get away from other campers. Now, I've been camping plenty of times. It's usually pretty chill. But there was something weird about this trip from the start. The animals, for example, were quiet. No birds, no crickets, nothing. Even the squirrels were MIAs. We joked that they knew something we didn't. The weirdest part happened at night. We were all just sitting around the fire, telling dumb ghost stories to try and creep each other out. There was this noise. I don't even know how to describe it. It was like a loud crack, and then, almost like a growl, but way deeper. We all froze. We looked at each other. Even Mike, who never shuts up, was speechless. A couple of minutes later, we heard it again. This time, it sounded closer. My friend Jake swears he saw something move behind the trees. Something huge. Something that shouldn't exist. We all kind of panicked. Doused with fire, we scrambled into the biggest tent with whatever we could grab. I didn't sleep a wink. Every rustle of leaves had me on edge. I could practically feel something out there. That same growl came back right before the sun started to rise. In the morning, the woods were just as quiet as before. There was no sign of whatever it was. We packed up our stuff and headed back to the car as fast as we could. No one wanted to admit it, but we were all scared out of our minds. I still don't know what was out there, but I don't think I want to find out either. Every time I think about it, that low growl rings in my ears. Maybe the squirrels were onto something after all. Since that night, I've been looking into things about the forest. It turns out there's a bunch of weird reports out there. Hikers who go missing without a trace. Campers who see strange lights in the sky. People talk about this thing called the Michigan Dogman. I don't know if that's what I saw, but the descriptions sound kind of similar. The weirdest part is that stories about weird stuff happening in Manistee supposedly go way back. People from nearby reservations talk about a creature that lives deep in the woods. They are some kind of protector or something, but they don't say much to outsiders. I guess you could call it a legend. It's hard to know what's real and what's just a story meant to scare people. But one thing's for sure. 
I'm never camping out there again. I'm leaving whatever's lurking in those woods alone. I'm not going to try and convince anyone who doesn't want to believe, but let me tell you, there's stuff out there that science books can't explain. This happened last fall when I was out hiking on a quieter trail in the Manistee National Forest. I was by myself, which I don't usually do now, but I just needed to get some fresh air and clear my head. The trail wasn't anything special, just your usual dirt path winding through dense trees. But that day, something felt off. An unusual silence had fallen over the forest, like no birds, no insects, nothing. It made my skin prickle a bit, to be honest. I decided to cut the hike short and head back to the trailhead where I'd parked my car. That's when I saw it. Right off the path, maybe 50 feet in, was a huge figure hunched behind a tree. At first, I thought it was a bear, but it was too tall, even standing hunched. It was also too thin. Then, it slowly turned its head towards me. That's when I saw the eyes. They shone in the gloom, almost greenish, and were way too wide for any bear I've ever seen. I swear this thing wasn't entirely animal, human in a way, but with something just wrong about it. It didn't move, it just stared. I stood there, frozen solid, for what felt like forever. I don't know how, but I broke the stare. I turned and ran back towards the trailhead like there was a wildfire behind me. I could hear it lumbering through the woods after me, but I didn't dare look back. Burst out of the trees, and I was practically at my car. I got in, locked the doors, and then it stopped. I never saw the creature again. I sat there, trying to catch my breath, my heart pounding. Eventually, I started the car and drove out there, never looking back. Sometimes I think maybe I did imagine the whole thing. Bad light playing tricks, or a wild animal that looked bigger and meaner than it was. But then I remember that feeling, the way it stared at me with those glowing eyes, and I know it was real. People can laugh or think I'm nuts, but I saw something that day. I know I did. I'll probably never have all the answers about what was hunting me out there. All I know is that I'd rather leave the secrets of the Manistee Forest buried and never, ever venture back on that trail again. It turns out there's more to the Manistee than meets the eye, Dogman. A hulking beast said to roam the woods, half man, half wolf. The descriptions I found mentioned glowing eyes, which sent chills right down my spine. Then, there's the whole UFO thing. Apparently, there have been reported sightings in the area for years. Not your typical flying saucer stuff, mind you, but strange lights in the sky, disappearing in flashes. Some folks even claim a connection, that the dogman and the UFOs are somehow linked. I'm not one for crazy theories, but after that face-off in the woods, I'm open to anything. The silence, the glowing eyes, that unnatural figure, it wasn't a bear, that much I know. There's something out there in the Manistee National Forest, and whatever it is, it definitely doesn't want company. Maybe it's a dogman, maybe something entirely else. One thing's for sure, I'm staying far away from those woods until I have some real answers. I grew up just outside Traverse City, Michigan, so the woods are pretty much my backyard. I've camped, hiked, and hunted all through the Manistee National Forest since I was a kid. You get used to the usual wildlife, deer, raccoons, and the occasional bear. But last summer, I came across something I still can't explain. It was a solo backpacking trip. I was headed for a remote lake a couple of days hiking. Not many people head that deep into the forest, and I liked the solitude. By the second day, I was feeling good and making good time. Then, the weather turned. Big, dark storm clouds rolled in. 
and it started bucketing rain. I found a sheltered spot beneath some big pines and decided to wait it out. That's when I heard it. At first, it sounded like branches breaking, but then it got louder. Something heavy was moving through the trees on the ridge above me. It was too big for any animal with which I was familiar. I grabbed my walking stick, mostly for reassurance, and edged out from under the trees to get a better look. As the rain poured down, I saw a figure on the ridgeline, massive, upright, and covered in dark fur. It looked almost human in shape, but far too tall and bulky. Suddenly, it stopped and turned its head toward me. I couldn't see its face clearly, but two eyes seemed to glow with a dull, yellow light. For a moment, we just stood there, frozen. Honestly, I was so scared I could barely think. Then, as quickly as it appeared, the creature bolted. With a series of loud crashes, it disappeared back into the trees. I just stood there in the rain, my heart pounding. I couldn't even bring myself to pack up and keep going. I ended up hiking straight back to the trailhead, completely rattled. I know it sounds crazy, like some Bigfoot story, but probably a part of me still hopes that's all it was. But that heavy feeling on the ridge, the sheer size of the thing, those eyes, it wasn't an animal I've ever seen before, and I don't think I want to get close enough to figure out what it is. I always thought Bigfoot was a made-up story, something to entertain kids on camping trips. But after seeing that thing, I'm not so sure anymore. This creature was way too big and powerful to be like some guy in a gorilla suit. I moved way too fast, too. I've read some theories people have about Bigfoot, about how they're not just some unknown ape, but something more supernatural. Some people even say they can turn invisible or teleport. Honestly, it sounds nuts, but then I remember those glowing eyes staring back at me through the rain, and it just feels less impossible. The other thing I keep thinking about is why it just stood there, watching me. It seemed curious or even intelligent. I saw those eyes. There was something in there, not just some wild animal. It raises a whole lot of questions that I don't think I like the answers to. Maybe there are really things in the forest that we don't understand. Things that are better off left alone. I've been looking into stranger things than just Bigfoot. One thing that keeps popping up is this idea of portals, or gateways to other dimensions. People are talking about rituals or something, opening cracks in reality that let these creatures through. It sounds pretty out there, I know. But when you think about it, we hardly know anything about how the universe really works. Maybe there are hidden energies or forces we just don't understand. It makes me wonder. Could what I saw actually be something that slipped into our world from somewhere else? Some other dimension? Another planet? Who knows? The thought's unsettling, honestly. The idea that you could be walking around, living your normal life, and right next to you, some kind of doorway could open up, spewing out who knows what. It gives me a whole new reason to be wary of those deep woods in the Manistee, I'll tell you that. The more I dig into this, the more it feels like there's this whole hidden side to the world. There's something they don't want us to know about, something they keep covering up. The government, or whoever's really running things, it just makes you wonder, why all the secrecy around UFO sightings? If Bigfoot was just a harmless animal, why wouldn't scientists be studying it? Why do these stories, which should be easy to dismiss, keep popping up over and over again, all around the world, for centuries? It makes me think there must be a reason to keep us in the dark. Maybe there's something dangerous about the truth. Maybe these creatures are more common than they want us to know. Maybe there's something they're protecting us from, or something they're protecting themselves from. Whatever the reason, I don't like being left on the outside. It's just a hunch. There's nothing to really back it up. But sometimes, 
the truth is more complicated than any storybook monster. Maybe the really scary things aren't the creatures lurking in the woods, but whoever decides what we get to see. It was a warm summer night, and I was out for a walk in the woods near my house, like I often do to unwind after a long day. And so, I was just strolling along the familiar trail, enjoying the peacefulness of the forest at dusk. Normally, I don't see anyone else out there at that hour. But suddenly, I heard a strange rustling in the bushes off to my right. And then, this bizarre creature stepped out onto the path maybe 30 feet in front of me. It was humanoid in shape but taller than a normal person, probably 7 or 8 feet, and its body was unnaturally thin and elongated. Despite the fading light, I could make out that its skin had a sickly grayish color. The strangest part was its head. It was oversized and sort of oblong-shaped. No discernible nose, just slits. And the eyes, they were huge and completely black. No whites at all. So we just stared at each other for what felt like minutes, though it was probably only seconds. I was frozen with fear. Clearly, this was no human, meaning I had no idea what its intentions were. But I got the distinct sense it was studying me, like it was curious. And then it made this unnerving clicking noise, and its head twitched to the side in a very inhuman way. That snapped me out of my paralysis, and so I turned and ran as fast as I could back down the trail towards home, my heart racing. I didn't dare look back until I had cleared the woods. When I finally did glance behind me, I didn't see it following me, thank God. I made it home out of breath and visibly shaken. My wife immediately knew something was wrong. I tried to explain what I had seen, but I'm not sure she fully believed me. I mean, I wouldn't have believed it myself if I hadn't experienced it firsthand. In fact, I still have a hard time believing it really happened. But I can't shake the image of that creature from my mind. I've never seen anything like it before or since. And now I'm honestly afraid to go back into those woods alone, especially anywhere near sunset. Because if that thing is still out there, I sure as heck don't want to cross paths with it again. It was just too freaky. I've lived in this rural area my whole life, born and raised, and I've always been the outdoorsy type, you know, hunting, fishing, hiking, that sort of thing. So spending time in the woods is second nature to me. In fact, that's a big part of why my wife and I chose this property, for the easy access to nature and the privacy. Meaning, when you spend that much time out in the wilderness, you see and experience a lot of strange things over the years, but nothing that would prepare you for an encounter like this. Normally, the weirdest thing I might come across is maybe a deer acting funny, because it's got rabies or something. And so at first I thought maybe this was a person, like a hiker who had gotten lost or turned around, until I got a good look at it and realized this was no human being. No way. And then your mind kind of starts racing, trying to process what you're seeing, you know. Despite all my years of being in the woods, in the dark, around wild animals, I'm not too proud to admit I was scared out of my wits. I mean, I'm a pretty even-keeled, logical guy. I don't spook easily or buy into a bunch of paranormal mumbo-jumbo. But this shook me deeply, because there was no denying what I saw and how unnatural and menacing it appeared, and the way it looked right at me, that intelligence in its eyes, that still gives me chills. It was like it saw right through me, into my soul. I can't properly explain it. Clearly, it's made me question a lot of my assumptions about the world and what's out there. I mean, I'm not saying it was definitely an alien or a monster, but it sure as heck wasn't like anything I've ever encountered before in all my decades of traipsing around the backwoods. And so now I've got this experience and these images burned into my brain and no real answers or explanations. It's unsettling to say the least. 
And so, I guess I should mention that this all went down in the Manistee National Forest. It's a huge, sprawling wilderness area not too far from where I live. Basically, it's miles and miles of dense woods, rivers, and hiking trails. Now, I've explored a good chunk of that forest over the years, meaning I know it like the back of my hand, or at least I thought I did until that night. Because despite all the time I've spent out there, I had never encountered anything like that creature before. In fact, when I think back on it now, there was something different about that particular section of the woods that evening. Normally, even at dusk, there's still the background noise of birds chirping, small animals rustling around, that kind of thing. But when that thing appeared, it was like all the usual sounds of the forest had just stopped. It was dead silent, other than the sound of that creature moving through the underbrush, and then the clicking noise it made. That just added to the otherworldly feeling. So, yeah, the Manistee National Forest... It's a place I've always found peaceful, even beautiful. But now, it's also the site of the single most terrifying experience of my life, and I can't help but wonder what else might be lurking out there in those deep woods that we don't know about. I mean, it's a vast wilderness. Who's to say what else could be hiding out there, right? Clearly, there's still a lot about this world, and even about places we think we know well, that we don't fully understand. And that creature, whatever it was, it's kind of shaken my understanding of the natural world and my place in it, if that makes sense. That's my story. I know it sounds crazy, and believe me, I sometimes question my own sanity when I think back on that night. But I can't deny what I saw out there in the Manistee National Forest. It was real, and it's changed me in ways I'm still trying to understand. I mean, I've always been a pretty grounded guy. I've never really bought into the idea of aliens or monsters or anything like that. But now, after coming face to face with something I can't explain, I'm not so sure anymore. It's like my whole worldview has been tilted on its axis. And the thing is, I don't have any clear answers or explanations. I've gone over it a million times in my head, trying to make sense of it, but I just can't. All I know is what I experienced and how it made me feel. The fear, the awe, the utter confusion. I haven't been back to that part of the woods since then. I'm not sure I ever will. Because, honestly, I'm afraid of what else I might encounter out there. If a creature like that exists, who knows what other mysteries those ancient forests might be hiding. So, for now, I'm just trying to carry on with my life as best I can. But I know I'll never forget that night, or the way it's shaken me to my core. It's like I've seen behind a curtain that I didn't even know existed, and I'm not sure I can ever unsee it. But I guess that's just part of the mystery of life, isn't it? There's so much out there that we don't understand, so much that we may never be able to explain. All we can do is keep moving forward, keep trying to make sense of our experiences, and keep our minds open to the possibilities, no matter how strange or terrifying they might be. Have you ever had an experience that shook you to your core and made you question everything you thought you knew about the world? Well, that's exactly what happened to me on what started out as a peaceful solo camping trip in the Manistee National Forest. I've always been a bit of an outdoorsman, comfortable spending time alone in nature, but nothing could have prepared me for the terrifying encounter I had that night. An encounter with something that I can only describe as not of this world. Since that fateful camping trip, I've gone down a rabbit hole of research into cryptids, the paranormal, and things that go bump in the night. And let me tell you, the more I learn the more I realize that there's so much about our world that we don't understand. But I'm getting ahead of myself. 
let me start from the beginning and share with you the details of my horrifying brush with the unknown in the depths of the Michigan wilderness. Brace yourself, because this is a story that might just make you think twice about venturing out into the woods alone at night. It was a warm summer night, and I decided to go camping alone in the Manistee National Forest. I had been there many times before and felt completely at ease in the woods. After setting up my tent, I built a small campfire and sat beside it, enjoying the peaceful sounds of the forest as it grew dark. Around midnight, I put out the fire and crawled into my tent to sleep. I'm not sure how long I was out before a strange noise woke me. It sounded like branches snapping, but rhythmically and deliberately, like footsteps. I sat up, listening intently. The sounds were coming closer. Suddenly, a loud thump shook the ground right outside my tent. I froze. Something large was moving around out there. I fumbled for my flashlight with shaking hands and slowly unzipped the tent flap. Stepping out, I swept the beam of my light across the campsite. At first, I didn't see anything. But as I turned to check behind the tent, my heart nearly stopped. Two large glowing red eyes were staring directly at me from about seven feet off the ground. I was paralyzed with fear. The eyes blinked and I caught a glimpse of a dark, hairy outline around them, like some kind of ape. But it had to be nearly eight feet tall. A low grunt came from its direction and I saw a flash of jagged teeth. Panicking, I bolted in the opposite direction, crashing blindly through the underbrush in the dark. I could hear heavy footfalls behind me, branches snapping under its weight. The grunts grew into ear-splitting roars that made my blood run cold. I ran until my lungs were bursting, darting around trees and jumping over logs. Finally, I tripped on a root and went sprawling to the ground, my flashlight tumbling away. I scrambled on my hands and knees, winded, desperately feeling around for the flashlight. Just then, everything went utterly silent. The roars and footsteps had ceased. I knelt there in the darkness, barely daring to breathe, straining my ears for any sound. A twig snapped behind me, so close it had to be mere feet away. After that terrifying moment in the dark forest, I managed to find my flashlight and half ran, half stumbled my way back to my car at the trailhead parking lot. With shaking hands, I drove to the nearest town and checked into a motel, not wanting to spend another minute in those woods. There's an old legend in the area about a creature the Ojibwe people call the Rugaru or the Wendigo, they describe it as a tall, hairy, man-like being with glowing eyes and sharp teeth. Some stories say it's a spirit that possesses people and turns them into cannibals. Others claim it's a physical creature that roams the woods. There's also a conspiracy theory that the government knows these creatures exist but is covering it up to prevent public panic. They say the Forest Service always dismisses Bigfoot sightings and discourages people from talking about their experiences. I don't know what to believe. All I know is that I saw something out there that night that I can't explain. It definitely wasn't a bear or any other animal I've ever encountered. It moved and sounded like something unnatural. Since my encounter, I've been doing a lot of research into cryptids and the paranormal. I've connected with other people online who have had similar experiences. It's weirdly comforting to know I'm not alone, that there are strange, unexplained things out there that others have witnessed too. I haven't gone back to the Manistee National Forest since that night. I'm not sure if I ever will. I don't know if I'll ever find out the truth about what I saw. It's changed the way I look at the world forever. What exactly was that creature that chased me through the woods? Was it some sort of undiscovered animal? A spiritual being? Something else entirely? And if something like that really exists, what does that mean for our understanding of the world and our place in it? I've tried to find answers, 
But the more I learn, the more questions I seem to have. The stories and theories I've come across have only deepened the mystery. Some say these creatures are interdimensional beings slipping in and out of our reality. Others believe they're some kind of ancient, intelligent species that's managed to stay hidden from humans for centuries. And then, there are the stories of portals and UFO activity in the area. Could there be some kind of connection there too? I don't know what to believe anymore. All I know is that my experience that night changed me in ways I'm still trying to understand. It's like a veil was lifted and I caught a glimpse of something beyond the mundane world we think we know. I find myself looking over my shoulder more often now, wondering if I'll ever cross paths with that creature again. Part of me hopes I never do, but another part of me wants to go back out there and search for answers, even if it means facing my fears head on. I wanted to reach out and share an unsettling experience I had recently while out for a walk in the woods near my home. It's something that I can't quite explain, and I thought you might be interested in hearing about it. It was a clear, cool night in early October when it happened. I was out for an evening walk in the woods near my house, something I often do to unwind after a long day at work. The moon was bright casting eerie shadows through the trees as I made my way along the familiar trail. About a mile into my walk, I heard a strange rustling in the undergrowth off to my left. I stopped, peering into the darkness, trying to make out the source of the noise. At first, I thought it must be a deer or maybe a raccoon foraging for food. But then I saw it, a pair of glowing yellow eyes staring back at me from the shadows. My heart began to race as the creature emerged from the brush. It was unlike anything I had ever seen before. It stood about four feet tall on two legs with grayish, hairless skin that seemed to shimmer in the moonlight. Its limbs were long and spindly, and it had an oversized head with those unblinking, lamp-like eyes. For a moment, the creature and I just stared at each other, frozen in place. Then, H let out a high-pitched, trilling cry that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Panicking, I turned and ran back down the path, my feet pounding on the dirt as I raced through the woods. I could hear the thing chasing after me, its quick, light footsteps and eerie calls growing closer. My lungs were burning and my legs ached, but I didn't dare slow down. I burst out of the trees and sprinted across the open field towards my house. Risking a glance over my shoulder, I saw the creature had stopped at the edge of the woods, still watching me with those glowing eyes. It let out one final piercing cry before turning and disappearing back into the forest. I rushed into my house, slamming and locking the door behind me. My hands shook as I tried to process what I had just witnessed. I had no idea what that thing was or where it had come from. All I knew was that I had never been so frightened in all my life. Part of me wanted to rationalize it, to convince myself that it must have just been a wild animal that I misinterpreted in the darkness. But I know what I saw. Those eyes, that skin, the way it moved. It was not of this world. And now, every time I look out at those woods, I can't help but wonder if it's still out there, watching and waiting. That encounter in the woods has seriously messed me up. I'm not easily scared, but this was next level terror, but nothing even comes close to the pure fear of that night. Ever since it happened, I've been a total wreck. I'm constantly on edge, freaking out at every little noise, I can't even look at the woods without feeling this sense of impending doom. Forget about it. I just keep replaying that moment over and over in my head. Those glowing eyes and that bone-chilling cry. I can't get them out of my mind. It's not just the fear, though. This whole thing has really screwed with my head. 
I always thought of myself as a pretty logical guy, you know? Like, everything has a rational explanation. But this? This has thrown me for a loop. It's like I've had to face the fact that maybe there's some seriously weird, unexplainable stuff out there. Stuff that doesn't play by the rules of reality as we know it. I'm dealing with all these conflicting emotions right now. Obviously, there's the fear and confusion. But there's also this morbid curiosity and even a twisted sense of wonder. Like, part of me wants to just chalk it up to my eyes playing tricks on me. But deep down, I know what I saw was real. And that's what's really messing with me. It's made me question everything I thought I knew about the world and my place in it. This encounter, it's changed me, man. Like, on a deep, fundamental level, it's made me realize that there's so much out there that we don't understand, so many mysteries and unknowns. It's forced me to confront my own vulnerability and the limits of my understanding. I feel like I've seen behind the curtain caught a glimpse of something that most people never experience, something that challenges everything we think we know about reality. And while it's been terrifying, it's also left me with this weird sense of wonder and a burning desire to understand more about what lies beyond the boundaries of our everyday lives. I've been trying to make sense of it all, but I'm still at a loss. I've gone over it in my mind a thousand times, but I can't come up with any logical explanation for what I saw out there in the woods. I even went back out there during the day to see if I could find any clues or evidence, but there was nothing. No tracks, no signs of disturbance, nothing. I know some of you might think I'm crazy or that I imagined the whole thing, but I assure you, it was real. I'll never forget those glowing eyes that unearthly cry or the way it moved. It's like it was from another world entirely. So, I've been debating whether to share this story or not, but I feel like I need to get it off my chest. A few weeks ago, I was camping alone in the Manistee National Forest, something I've done plenty of times before. I'm an experienced hiker and outdoorsman, so, I know my way around the woods. It was around dusk when I set up my tent near a small creek, a couple miles off the main trail. The forest was quiet, just the usual sounds of birds and insects as the day wound down. I cooked up some dinner on my camp stove and settled in for the night, reading a book by Lantern Light. Around midnight, I woke up to a strange noise outside my tent. It was a sort of snuffling, grunting sound, like a large animal foraging around. I figured it was probably just a raccoon, or maybe a deer, so I didn't think much of it. But then I heard heavy footsteps, and my tent actually shook as something brushed against it. I sat up, heart pounding, and slowly unzipped the tent flap to peek outside. What I saw made my blood run cold. There in the moonlight, was a massive, hairy creature, easily eight feet tall. It was standing on two legs, but it definitely wasn't human. Its body was covered in dark, shaggy fur, and it had a broad, muscular chest. But the face… the face was the most terrifying part. It had a sort of snout, like a wolf, but with intelligent, almost human-like eyes. For a moment, the creature and I just stared at each other. Then, it let out a low, rumbling growl that shook me to my core. I watched in horror as it turned and lumbered off into the forest, its heavy footsteps fading into the night. I just sat there in my tent, clutching my knife and jumping at every noise. As soon as the sun came up, I packed up my gear and got the hell out of there. I hiked straight back to the trailhead, not even stopping to rest. All I know is that it was real, and it was unlike anything I've ever seen before. I haven't gone back to the Manistee National Forest since then, and to be honest, I'm not sure if I ever will. Just writing this story down has brought back all the fear and adrenaline of that night. 
I don't know what that creature was or what it wanted, but I do know that the woods don't feel as safe to me anymore. It's like there's a whole other world out there, one that we barely understand, and I've caught a glimpse of something that I was never meant to see. I've been hesitant to share this story with anyone, because I know how crazy it sounds. I mean, a giant, wolf-like creature stalking through the woods. It's the kind of thing you'd expect to see in a horror movie, not real life. I'm worried that people will think I'm either lying or losing my mind. I can imagine the skepticism and doubt I'd face if I tried to tell this story to my friends or family. They'd probably give me that look. You know, the one that says, sure, buddy, whatever you say. They might even try to rationalize it, suggesting that it was just a bear or a trick of the light. But I know what I saw, and it was no bear. Part of me understands why people would be skeptical. I mean, I've always been a rational guy myself. If someone had come to me with a story like this before my encounter, I probably would have had a hard time believing them too. It's natural to want to find a logical explanation for things, to fit them into our understanding of the world. But that's the thing. This experience defies logic. It challenges everything we think we know about the natural world and the creatures that inhabit it. I think that's why people might be so quick to dismiss it, because it's easier to deny something than to have to confront the possibility that there are things out there that we can't explain. There's also the fear of ridicule and judgment. I know that if I share this story, I'm opening myself up to criticism and mockery. People might label me as a conspiracy theorist or a nut job. They might question my sanity or my credibility. And that's a scary thing to face, especially when you are already grappling with the trauma of the experience itself. But despite all of that, I feel like I need to share this story. I need to put it out there, even if people don't believe me. Because maybe, just maybe, there's someone else out there who has seen something similar. Someone who knows the truth and can validate my experience. And even if there isn't, I think it's important to have these conversations, to open our minds to the possibility that there are things in this world that we don't fully understand. So yeah, I'm nervous about sharing this. I'm bracing myself for the skepticism and the doubt, but I'm doing it anyway because I know what I saw and I can't just keep it to myself forever. Maybe by putting my story out there, I can find some kind of closure or understanding. Or maybe I'll just have to learn to live with the knowledge that there are some mysteries in this world that we may never fully comprehend. There have been a few other weird things that have happened to me over the years. At the time, I just brushed them off as odd coincidences or my imagination playing tricks on me. But after what I saw in the Manistee National Forest, I can't help but wonder if they're somehow connected. When I was a kid, probably around 10 or 11, I remember waking up in the middle of the night to a strange sound outside my bedroom window. It was a sort of high-pitched, almost metallic whining noise, like nothing I'd ever heard before. I looked outside and I swear I saw a bright, oval-shaped light hovering over the cornfield behind our house. It only lasted for a few seconds before it shot off into the sky and disappeared. I remember feeling scared and confused, but when I told my parents about it the next morning, they just laughed it off and said I must have been dreaming. Then, a few years ago, I was driving home late at night on a lonely stretch of highway. It was one of those clear, moonless nights where the stars just seemed to go on forever. Suddenly, my car radio started acting up, crackling with static, and then going completely silent. At the same time, I noticed a weird greenish glow in the sky up ahead. As I got closer, I realized it was a huge triangular craft of some kind, just hovering there silently. It had three bright lights on each corner and a pulsing red light in the center. I slowed down, my heart racing, but as soon as I pulled over to get a better look, the craft suddenly accelerated 
and zipped off into the distance at an incredible speed. The whole thing couldn't have lasted more than a minute or two. I've never told anyone about these experiences before, not even my closest friends. I guess I just didn't want to be labeled as a weirdo or a conspiracy nut. But after my encounter in the woods, I can't help but see them in a new light. Is it possible that they're all connected somehow? Could there be some kind of pattern or meaning behind these strange occurrences? I don't have any answers, but I do know that my perspective on the world has shifted. I used to think that everything could be explained by science and logic, that there was no room for the unexplained or the paranormal. But now, I'm not so sure. I feel like I've caught a glimpse of something bigger, something that challenges our understanding of reality itself. It's a scary thought, but it's also kind of thrilling in a way. To think that there might be mysteries out there waiting to be uncovered, secrets that we can barely even begin to comprehend. I don't know if I'll ever find the truth behind my own experiences, but I do know that I can't just ignore them anymore. I have to keep searching, keep asking questions, even if it means facing the skepticism and ridicule of others. Because who knows, maybe someday I'll find the answers I'm looking for. Or maybe I'll just have to learn to live with the questions, to embrace the unknown and the unexplained. Either way, I know that my life will never be the same after what I've seen and experienced. And in a strange way, I'm grateful for that. It's opened my eyes to a whole new world of possibilities, and I can't wait to see where it takes me next. So that's my story. I know it's a lot to take in, and I'm sure some of you are probably skeptical. Hell, if I hadn't experienced it myself, I'd probably have a hard time believing it too. But I can't deny what I saw out there in the woods, or the other strange things that have happened to me over the years. I guess what I'm struggling with now is trying to make sense of it all. I keep asking myself, what does it all mean? Are these just random, isolated incidents, or is there some kind of pattern or purpose behind them? And if there is, what does that say about the nature of our reality? Are there really things out there that we can't explain? Forces that we don't understand? Part of me is scared by that thought, but another part of me is strangely excited. It's like I've been given a glimpse behind the curtain, a peek at something bigger and more mysterious than I ever could have imagined. And now that I've seen it, I can't just go back to living my life like before. I feel like I need to keep searching, keep asking questions, even if I don't always like the answers. So, thanks for listening to my story and for keeping an open mind. I know it's not easy to believe in things that we can't explain, but I think it's important to at least be willing to consider the possibility. The possibility that the Manistee National Forest is downright terrifying and nobody should ever go there. And if you guys enjoyed this particular episode exploring a very terrifying, creepy national forest, go ahead and comment down below lurking in the forest. So that way I know who made it to the very end of the episode and who did not. And if you guys enjoy these kinds of episodes where we just go into these long user accounts of humanoids and strange eyewitness encounters of the paranormal and supernatural, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and I will see all of your beautiful faces or at least all your beautiful comments in the following episode.